Okay, um, let's continue with our series on um, the classified IGCSE biology question. Um, here we're going to be looking at um, chapter one, um, paper paper four on um, characteristics, um, characteristics and classification of living organism and classification of living organisms. Okay, so quickly, the first question I have here is, said figure 2.1 is an electron micrograph showing the bacteria called vibrocholery. Now the question is, bacteria are prokaryotes and state two distinguishing features of prokaryotes. You know, um, prokaryotes are usually uh, single cell, single cell or unicellular organisms. Yeah, unicellular organisms. Um, bacteria, uh, they don't have no chloroplast. They don't have chloroplast. Um, they also don't have no mitochondria. Um, mitochondria, no mitochondria. Um, since their bacteria, prokaryotes also have um, what is called um, plasmids that is used in biotechnology. Um, they also have, um, yes, they have cell wall that is not made up of cellulose. Uh, so no cellulose cell wall. Their cell wall is made up of what is known as the peptide ligand. So uh, that's it. You just need two of this to fill this up. Now, um, the bacteria shown in this figure has what is called flagellum. Flagellum is this tail here that looks like a tail. The structure that looks like a tail is called the flagellum. Uh, now, the first question is suggest so the function. The function of flagellum is just one mark. It's used for movement. That's it. Now, we, we're looking at a dichotomous key here again. Uh, they said, um, question number two, figure 1.1 shows five species of, uh, five species, figure 1.1 shows five species of mollusk, okay, these are mollusks, uh, use the key to identify each species, write the letter A to E in the correct um, box beside the key. Body is completely or partially covered in a shell. Go to two. Um, body is not completely covered or partly covered in a shell. Body not completely covered or partly covered in a shell. Um, that should be, if you look at all of them, this is A, B, C, D, uh, E. This should be E. Now come to two shell is attached to rock by thin thread. Shell is attached to rock by thin thread. I think that should be A. Now shell is not attached to rock by thin thread. Go to three. Shell is a sphere that cover to a point. It's a sphere that cover to a point. Shell is not a sphere that cover to a point. Animal has tentacles an animal have two tentacles okay the one that has just two is abc is c the ones that have tentacles is between b and d i think b has a lot d has a lot of tentacles d then shell is a sphere that comes to a point okay yeah comes to a point here so the answer to that question is this should be B. That's it. Um, there's another dichotomous key here. Okay, state two features that are shown by all mollusk. By all mollusks. Uh, if you look at all of them, um, they are all uh, invertebrates. All of them are invertebrate. Uh, 
um, all Moluks have body that is they are not segmented but they have soft soft body part uh, their body is soft uh, so think that all of them has that characteristics because it's not all that has a shell okay let, let's check the mark scheme for that um, okay uh, they have okay soft body and their body is also not segmented uh, they are they have hydrostatic skeleton um, they are not they, are, they have um, soft body not segmented so if you write those two is to get um, the two marks um, they have muscular foot so you ignore feet they, they just have one single foot okay uh, let's continue our journey now figure 1.1 shows seven different species of amphibians seven different fish species of amphibians okay so we just need to use dichotomous key to to identify them um, use the key to identify each species write the letter of each species a to g in the correct box beside the key one has been done for you a uh, long narrow body I, I i feel this is since we've answered one question that is similar to it uh, anytime you come out in the exam you apply the same skills you look at it and look at if it has that characteristics then you should be able to answer that question effectively now they said many amphibian species throughout the world are endangered now suggest three reasons why many amphibian species are endangered now you need to know the meaning of this keyword endangered endangered means it's um, being threatened um, it also means that it's about to a uh, possibility of it becoming extinct there's possibility um, possibility of of extinction now when you look at that uh, suggest three reasons why uh, there can be possibility of extinction one of the stuff there can be habitat destruction when you destroy habitat destruction of this species can actually uh, lead to uh, extinction uh, of them becoming endangered uh, you can also have factors like um, factors like uh, when you have habitat destruction you have deforestation even uh, things like urbanization when you clear forest okay this i think this is more like a development for it um something is coming to my head uh, habitat destruction deforestation urbanization you have um um, things like um, ah, no, not not loss of biodiversity. Mm, ah, it's leaving my head. What is this? Um, habitat destruction, deforestation, hunting. Good. Hunting or um, poaching of these animals can also lead to um, them becoming endangered so let's see uh, let me check uh, the mark scheme is for that point okay we have habitat this destruction we have deforestation we have um, hunting here okay another thing can be um, predation competition lack of food and also pollution things like global warming can also affect um, these organisms so uh, like global warming global warming due to climate change um, lack of food or starvation now next here is we have say mariapods a group of anthropods that are commonly found in soil habitat in many parts of the world many mariapods are very small and not easy to identify now figure 6.1 shows four species of mariapods are not drawn to the same scale now from here they say you should suggest three features that all 
Maria Pods uh, have that is quite visible from here. And from here, you can tell that they have segmented bodies. Um, they all have, um, you see, they all have antennas. Um, they are all, they all have um, exoskeleton. They all have, you can put many legs on approximately each, uh, each um, segment of their body. So, okay, let's let's see the mask skin also. Uh, if we're on track, they have antennas, uh, elongated body, segmented body, many legs, and greater than ten. They are exoskeleton, and they also have jointed legs. So, I think um, we are on track. So, uh, let's look at the next question here. It's they said, describe three features of Maria Po that could be used to make a dichotomous key. So, here you have an example of this organism. So, you just use the picture to come up with um, dichotomous keys that can be used to identify them uh, individually. So, first, let's see. Uh, we need three. If you go, what are those things that you can use to divide them? Um, if you look at this, you, we can look at the length of the bodies. Um, so I can come down here. I can write. Um, I can look at the length of the body. You can use that. Uh, you can look at the the length of the antennas. Also differs. Um, the length of the legs or the number of legs they all have so I can also look at uh, the numbers of legs numbers of legs they have I can look at the length or size of their individual antennas so let's see okay length of the antennas uh, we are correct um, presence or absence of tail, uh, length of tail, uh, the length of legs, uh, that's better. Uh, number of segments, length of the body, at least three of that, you've been able to get your full answer. I think with that you're on track. Uh, next is mitochondria are uh, cell structure that contain a small quantity of DNA. Scientists are sequencing the DNA of one particular gene in the mitochondria to help identify different species of many animals including mariapods. The sequence that they find are called barcodes. Now state the part of the cell that contain most of the DNA. Uh, DNA are found within the nucleus of cells. Now uh, suggest so how DNA barcoding might be useful in the conservation of animals such as mariapods. Um, DNA barcoding can be used in conservation of animals such as uh, it helps to keep um, the animal species um, so that it can be used for when it's time for you to to breed them. Uh, it helps you to save uh, those species, their the, the, the unique characteristics. Uh, I think that's one that I remember presently. So let me just go to the mark scheme to be quite sure. Now, uh, barcode is, okay, you see, uh, it helps to identify the animal accurately, uh, help to identify uh, threatened species. Um, barcoding is useful in distinguishing characteristics and is quite cheap and uh, it helps to identify previously unknown species so um, DNA barcoding helps to identify previously unknown species so it's cheap uh, it's useful because it's cheap uh, so it's using dichotomous key also now state the function of DNA in cells uh, DNA contain genetic material DNA, DNA is the genetic materials that 
uh, are transferred to organisms uh, in terms of uh, inheritance. So DNA, basically, you see, they are codes of um, proteins which store genetic information and can be passed on from one generation to the next. So they are codes of proteins which contain which contain genetic information and can and can be uh, transferred from one organism to another Okay, here we have table 1.1 shows some features of five group of vertebrates. Now complete table 1.1 to compare the five group of vertebrates using a tick to indicate if the group shown shows the future or a cross if it doesn't. And one has been done for us. Um, bony fish. Uh, will they have... Uh, 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 scaly skin, uh, external ears, feathers, obviously there are feathers, that, that's clear, external ear, do bony fish have external ears, yeah I think so, I know mammals have external ears, reptiles, they have external ears, yes they should, reptiles have external ears, they don't have feathers, mammals don't have feathers, Amphibians don't have feathers. Bony fishes don't have feathers. So I think I'm done with feathers. And glands. Um, mammals have mammary glands. Reptiles don't have mammary glands. Amphibians. Bony fishes, no. Amphibians, no. Um, so look at scaly skin. Um, birds and reptiles have scaly skin. Um, the fish, fish have scale, but is it scaly skin? I'm not sure with this. Let me see. Um, okay, uh, I think we got this part right. We got this right. Okay, uh, <laughs> reptiles, so we, we, we're correct. So this doesn't, this doesn't, this doesn't. Uh, these reptiles don't have external ears, they don't have, these don't have, so that's how it should be. Mind you, in this type of question, they do mark it um, per row, uh, so this will be one mark, two mark, three mark, and the fourth mark, so you need to be very careful with that. Now, figure 1.1 shows a southern cross castle, cast, castle where uh, this is the scientific name, which is a large bird that cannot fly. It lives in the rainforest in northern Australia and southern New Guinea. The crossoweary uh, feeds on fruit and helps to disperse seed from the three species, such as crossway plum. Now, uh, so just why the crossaway digest fruits but not seed? Um, one of the major thing is uh, fruit is soft. That's why it's easily digested. Fruit is soft. Uh, I think another reason is seed have remember they have um, seed coats uh, and also they have a tester. So um, this that means cross away do not they don't produce energy. That no sorry, they don't produce. They don't produce enzymes that can digest the tester or seed coat. Oh. Now, uh, here we have crabs are classified along with prawns, shrimps, and lobsters as crustaceans. Most crabs live in the sea although some live in fresh water and there are a few land dwelling crabs figure 1.1 shows the structure of a typical crab 
Okay, now state the group of animals that include crustaceans, insects, arach arachnids, and myriapods. Remember, I said they are called the camis, and camis are anthropods. Arthropods. So that's it. Arthropods. That's the answer. Now, uh, arachnids, blah, 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 are classified as arthropods. Okay, this will answer the other question. Now, scorpions such as this, Papa Ice, and arachnids. Now, state three features shown by da, 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 and visible in figure 1.1 1 .1 that arachnids are arthropods. Now, they have uh, jointed legs. Their body is divided into segmented body. Head, um, um, cephalothorax, and abdomen. And obviously, this is generally it has an exoskeleton. That's all. Now, figure 6.1 shows three different insects. Okay, good. Insect 1 and 2 are more closely related to each other than insect to each other than insect 3. These are two closely related. Now, uh, explain how the binomial names indicate that insect 1 and 2 are closely related. Now, if you look at it, this is the genus uh, and this is the uh, species name. So, the first thing you need to put, uh, insect 1 and 2 have the same genus. Same genus name uh, called Vespula. Uh, let me see something. Sec like one and two have the same genus, uh, which is different from uh, same genus called Vespula. So Vespula will give you one mark. The same genus will give you the other mark. Insect 3 have different genus if you want to add to be sure again. Explain how the appearance of the three insects suggests that insect 1 and 2 are more closely related. First, based on size and the shape of their antennas. How many? They have two pairs of wings. That answer that question. Now, figure 1.1 1 .1 shows the vertical section through a flower of soya beans called this. Now, following self pollination. Now, figure 1.2 1 .2 shows part of the section uh, or at a higher magnification. This is it. Now, they said, name the genus to which the soya beans belong. So you come. If you look at the scientific name here, the first one here is the genus, while the second one is species. So the genus is glycine. Sound like a drug. Glycine. C I N E. State two features which are only found in dicot. Dicot has two cotyledons. They have network of veins. Um, on net like um, veins, their own veins are not parallel, it's branches. Uh, on the last stuff is their petals are in um, uh, the number of petals are in four to um, uh, I think five to six, and they also have two seed leaves. think uh, that's it so let's see a network of veins uh -huh. broad leaf two cotyledon or seed leaf flower is a multiple of four or five that's that's it flower is a multiple of four or five now i i believe in chapter one um, there are 
based on most of the past papers I've looked at, there are few other questions that is possible might come out that we've not answered there. But most of what comes out, this is how chapter one questions are quite structured. So if you are able to know all this stuff, go through it, then it is quite difficult for you not to be able to attempt the chapter one questions effectively. So see you in chapter two.